Well, you guys are kind of the, the to me the you're the you're the kings of LA right now. I mean, like to me, you know, and Ka Kawhi just just joined that that company, but. Um, where do the Rams rank? Is it like is it like second fiddle to the Lakers? Because it is a Lakers town. It's not a football town per se yet, but it's getting there. I think it's a football town. You think it's a football it town? It is now. Okay. It is so you're now. making it a football town it's again. It's a football town now. I like it. What's the who's the coolest celebrity you met that knew who you were and was a fan of you? You know, the, the, I've met a lot of people, a lot of greats. You know, I'm, I'm gonna say this one person because I grew up always. Loving the way he played, the intensity, the, the passion to play with the game. I met Ray Lewis. Oh, yeah. So I met him, I want to say, two years ago. We was at a um, Super Bowl function, I think it was in Minnesota. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm in there. He walks up to me. He said, what's up, Aaron? You, you're like, I said, what? another Aaron? Ray, no, I'm like, I, I would never imagine that Ray Lewis would know, know my name before I even get to introduce right. myself to him. So for me, that was like, wow. Yeah. You know, that was a surreal moment for me. I almost like. To me, that was crazy, yeah. you know, because I grew up watching that guy and, and seeing all the passion he played with. And even though I played D-Lyman, I wanted to play like Ray Lewis, you know right. what I'm talking about, with that passion and that, the way he was just greedy with it and, and hustled and made every single play. For him to come up and, and know who I was before I introduced myself, I was, I was blown away That's by that. That's a pretty that. good one. Um, you talked about being underappreciated, slighted at times. You've talked about that before. Three stars coming to Pitt. Not that rivals or your high school rating means anything. You know, you slid in the draft relative to some other defensive players who, they're not you. Um, a lot of it's height, right? I mean, a lot of it people were like, hey, six feet or whatever. It's, you have challenged I'm the- six one. You six, six <laughs> one? That's good. Six one in shoes or six one without? No, I'm six one. It really doesn't fucking matter because that <laughs> bank account is 10 feet tall and you've got 20 and a half sacks on a single season. So, um, but, but what is it that you felt like people were, were not seeing in you or even leading up to the combine? My size, my yeah. height. It was, that's, that's normal. Everybody going to have a, you know, they, they able to have their own opinions. Yeah. You know, because even in college, the NFL, it's, it's your investment, you know, you, they invest into you in the college to give you a full-time scholarship. They pay for that, so you know they, they want to make sure the players they getting is the right ones. And sometimes they might. It's a good investment, though. You know, for whatever I don't know what a, the scholarship to Pitt goes for a year, but I mean the return was like a million-dollar facility. So yeah, yeah. that was a good investment there. But you know, it come with it. They, they everybody, you know, they they only think because I was a six-one and two hundred sixty pounds, probably couldn't hold up with them bigger guys. Them guys that six-five, three thirty, three twenty. Yeah. So it, it's all right, everybody. My thing is when someone when they said that I, it, it didn't push me and make me feel some type of way. It just was like, I just I ain't. I guess I ain't good enough. I got to get better, you know. So well, I just got to show them. I feel like in college it's it's a little easier if you're a three star to overcome that than it is to be a low draft pick, which you weren't a low draft pick. Yeah. I mean, you were still a high draft pick, but you know, guys in the pros they got a lot more to overcome. So now maybe down the road there's a, a guy who's six one, who's two eighty who you've changed the perception of what his career might be. Have you thought about the fact that you have challenged that prototype and you've, you've challenged the status quo and you're going to pave the way for other players? Yeah, somebody was talking to me about that, and that's the thing that's, that's crazy. Um, you're opening up doors for other guys that's the similar body types. But, you know, I always say if you can play, you can play. You yes. Know, it don't matter how, what size you is. If you go out there and you put it on film, there ain't much they can say. What they're going to keep saying is they're going to try to find ways, but it's, it's right there on film. They're seeing it. They're seeing the success. So, with, <laughs> well, I mean, She's listen. I mean, you played in, you played in nearly every game of your career, going back to Pitt. You're durable. Um, I think the, you might have sat a game or two in the pros because y'all were resting people or whatnot. Yeah. Um, you don't need training camp. <laughs> uh, but you, you've proved all these things out that you're talking about to be. And another thing is like, listen, like you're six one, but your arm length is really solid. Yeah. So you have length, and you're shorter. I think that if I'm looking at D tackles, I've always said this, why the fuck do I want somebody, I'm not saying somebody 6'5 can't play, yeah. but I'm saying like, why do I want a guy who can't play with leverage and you're gonna get all enamored with his height? Look at his arm length, yeah. you know what I mean? Look so, at the explosion, see, what we, would you look for? I always thought defensive ends were supposed to be the tall guys Longer. as growing up, and I always thought the interior guys were supposed to be the shorter guys. I feel like the leverage is a plus for an guy, interior guy going against a guy that's 6'4", 6'5". Because you, you got the leverage off rip. They got to try to get down to you. 
So you already got the end leverage with the, the pad level, and then you hand placement, everything. Just all you, all you gotta do is working on. It's all about getting on and off the guy to, to get to the backfield. That's the main is to make the play. And so much of your game is predicated on scaring people with that leverage. You know, like the you know when I watch you, you're setting all your stuff up with the fear of that bull, that mm -hmm. helmet right under the chin. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like it's your strongest attribute. Mm -hmm. I mean, along with a bunch of other stuff, but. You grew up watching who? I mean, who was your, you know, if you're looking for a comp, it's harder to find when you're a six foot one guy today in this height, this height crazed league, you know, where these personnel guys are like, yeah. well, you gotta be six five. Who'd you watch? See, I didn't just watch the defense. I watched everybody. I watched guys like Paul Amalu. Yeah. I was a Casey Hampton fan. You know, his tackle for the Steelers yeah. just because I played D-line. Um, you know, back then when I was a little younger, Warren sat watching him play. Yeah. So it wasn't Ray Lewis. I, I watched everybody on yeah. defense. I didn't just watch defense alignment. I watched linebackers. I watched safety. I just watched everybody play. The guys that was making them splash plays, like mm -hmm. Paul Amalu jumping over the whole line, jumping on the quarterback, making sacks. I was, that's the guys I, I was in tune to and I wanted to watch, you know, them guys making them, them big time splash plays. Who, um, who do you like watching now? Defense alignment? Yeah. I like Fletcher Cox. Fletcher's He's a, a bully, man. And you guys couldn't be more different, yeah. but you're 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 just the two best. I he's, mean. Just, he's just so strong, like the way he just can power and like. And then he got technique. They don't understand. He got he got, got technique, technique with him too. Got a lot and of he's strong, like unbelievable strong. And then he got tech, a lot of technique. So that's crazy. He could play end. I mean, it's the same thing with you. When you yeah. used to get out there in Greg's defense, mm -hmm. Greg Williams, and you know we'd do that odd stuff, and you'd go out there once a practice yeah. and rush. We us the ends would be like, fuck, it, dude, take our job. <laughs> fuck this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but Fletch could do the same thing, yeah. and, and, and um, he's super impressive. The two best defensive tackles on the planet. Obviously, Fletch is coming off surgery, uh, getting healthy again. Aaron is absolutely rolling in L.A. And, you know, they're two different players, two different body types, uh, guys who respect each other immensely, which is really cool. Uh, Fletch is more of the throwback. Aaron's more the new age kind of guy who's breaking the mold, giving younger guys who are undersized hope. You might have never seen him on the field in the 80s or 90s. Um, Fletch is a guy that would fit right in with that Philly defense back in the early 90s, the D-line specifically, uh, and Jerome Brown, Reggie White, Clyde Simmons. He looked just perfect trotting out uh, through the tunnel at the vet. And he's probably the best D-lineman that Philly's had since then. I'd give a shout out to Trent Cole because he's a legend, uh, but he's certainly probably the best D lineman since that group and probably the best defensive player since Weapon X and Brian Dawkins. I mean, just even being compared to, you know, to a guy like to Aaron, two top defensive player of the year, um, I mean, it means a lot to me. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm an Aaron Donald fan if you really ask me. Um, so I might go and watch his tape. Uh, and got a lot of respect for the guy. You know, uh, we always talk about, you know, ways to get to the quarterback, and that's ways to make us better as D linemen. So, um, you know, I wish they do the best of luck this year, and uh, go get them. You're a student of the game. You watch. Who's an O lineman now that that you watch and that you've played that you respect? I mean, you don't have to like him. See, I, I, don't, I hate giving offensive of linemen credit. Yeah, well, you got to um, do it here. <laughs> I really don't know, cause I feel like I don't get enough one on ones to really be like this guy. I'm, I'm always. I'm not. I'm, I'm being honest. I always get like double teams or triple or horse last for. I don't really get the opportunity to, to get too many one on ones to really see, you know, how good a guy really is. So uh, I feel like all offensive linemen is good. I'm gonna give him credit. So basically, you don't want to give an O lineman any credit. Was you? You took 60 seconds to tell me that fuck O lineman. I'm not giving a single one credit. <laughs> I, not I, even I, my brother. I ain't never go against your brother. Oh, you haven't played. When we, when we played on my second year, they paid him at tackle then. Oh, they did. Yeah. Yeah. So I ain't really never go against your brother. Oh, you're off the hook. Thanks for checking out part three of the AD Fishbowl interview. Please stick around for part four. It's very technical for you uh, big football heads. Uh, we've got some technique talk. We've got a special guest, in a way, uh, a pioneer of one of AD's favorite moves. So stick around for part four if you love football. And please subscribe to our channel.